as we talk about needing God uh, in our lives. Uh, it's one of the reasons we're doing this series uh, on dangerous prayer. Uh, we, we often pray for uh, in safe ways, as we talked about last week, uh, that God would be with us, that he would keep us safe, that he would, um, you know, that, that he would guide and protect us, uh, but also um, he, as he promises, never leave or forsake us. But these prayers that we're looking at, and we started with that dangerous prayer of search my heart. Uh, and, and that's in the reality that we're both uh, sinners and saints simultaneously. And our hearts uh, can be deceiving. And so we talked about having God, and when we do ask God to, uh, to search our hearts, he, he obliges, and, and he does let us know those areas that we need. Uh, we're also going to be praying the dangerous prayer next week of send me. Because um, he also wants to send us too into our lives to make a difference. But today might be one of the harder of the dangerous prayers. And that's the prayer, break me. Uh, when I'm using this metaphor of being broken, uh, it, it's it's in the same vein as being connected to the vine and being the branch, and he says, uh, the, the one that doesn't bear fruit, he cuts off and throws into the fire, but the one that remains, he prunes. And, and pruning is never uh, a pleasant thing. He, he also says, another way, uh, metaphor that he uses for being his children is that he disciplines those that he loves. The process of being broken to certain things that are hindering us in our lives of discipleship with Jesus, the process of pruning, the process of, uh, of being disciplined is never, and it even says it's not something we look forward to. And we may not even want to pray that, that he would break us. But the reality is, and you can see it all through the scriptures. The reality is that it's from our brokenness that some of the greatest and most wonderful experiences of serving can come. It's from our brokenness that we're able to relate with people better than any other time in our lives. And so as we get into looking at this prayer of being broken, and this process that, that has pain to it. And we all go through the pain of this life. It's, it's also the reality that this isn't a theology of glory. This isn't a theology that says, you know, once you become a Christian, then your life is going to be just wonderful. God's going to heal all your pains. He's going to heal all of your relationships. He's going to do everything that would cause you hurt and pain in this world. We know that that is something he can do. But he also allows us to go through difficult times to prepare us. There's a couple of stories I want to look at more closely that are very close together in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 14. The first story is about a prostitute sinful woman that comes to Jesus broken herself, that comes to Jesus because she has experienced in him a mercy and a grace that she's never received anywhere else in the world. And she comes bearing a gift. This woman is rejected by many, looked down on, ridiculed, and yet Jesus' response to her is, is different than everyone else. In this story, uh, you have Jesus uh, being very accepting of what she has to offer. And it's really one extraordinary act of worship 
that actually raises the ire of those that are around. And as we look at this, uh, it says that this woman that Jesus holds up with respect regardless of her past, regardless of what others think of her, comes to him. And it says in verse 3 of chapter 14, And while he was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he was reclining at table, a woman came with an alabaster flask of ointment of pure nard, very costly, and she broke the flask and poured it over his head. This uh, incredible act of worship was very expensive. It was over a year's worth of wages. This, this woman was so taken by Jesus and his love for her that she brings to him uh, a gift that really did represent her past. Uh, as a prostitute, uh, this kind of perfume would also be used, not just for burying the dead, but also for luring her clientele to her home and to her. And so this gift represented her past sin and the desire to leave that behind and turn to Jesus Christ. This gift also represented her future. This was probably all of her savings all that she had to live on for the future, trusting completely in what he would give her for the future, knowing she wasn't going to trust in these worldly things, like a costly ointment. And yet those around ridiculed her. They said that she should have used it to feed the poor. Jesus responds to this extraordinary, extravagant gift in this way. He says, leave her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has done a beautiful thing. For you always have the poor with you, and whenever you want, you can do good to them, but, if you, will not, but you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for burial. And truly, I say to you, wherever the gospel is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. Do you hear the honor Jesus gives to this woman, the mercy? She's done a beautiful thing. She will be honored wherever the gospel is proclaimed in all the earth. Because it's from her brokenness. I want you to hear what happened. What did she do? She brought this pure nard and she broke it. And then what did she do? She poured it over his head. There's key words in these two stories in in Mark that I want to hold up today for us. Broken and poured. Broken from her past and poured out for her future. But I also want you to hear how Jesus identifies with this in a special way. You see, Jesus receives this gift pointing to and prophesying about the kind of death he would die. One that was like a criminal. A death that meant that he, criminals weren't anointed before they were buried. He was identifying with the kind of death he would die as someone who deserved it. And yet, that's where the stories in contrast are really quite different here. You see, Jesus, unlike the prostitute, unlike the sinful woman, was perfect in every way. And his story comes to us also in Mark 14. You see, Jesus celebrated the Passover with the disciples on the night before he was betrayed. These two stories are side by side here, I believe for a reason. Because look what he says 
words that we're very familiar with in Mark 14, beginning with verse 22. It says, And as they were eating, he took bread, and after blessing it, broke it and gave it to them and said, Take, this is my body. And he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank of it. And he said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Do you hear the two words in there? What are they? Broken and poured. Broken and poured. And the big difference in the contrast of these two stories was it wasn't for his past and his future, but for ours, for this woman's. You see, he was broken on the cross. That was his whole reason for coming, again, not to serve, be served, but to serve and to give his life. Broken and his blood, what? Poured out. For our past, for what we needed to be broken from, all that would hinder in our relationship with God for now and for the future. He's talking about the future that we would have Not just when we go to heaven, but in this life as well. All the disciples had to be broken in different ways to be able to be utilized by him. When you think of Paul, he had to be broken of his hatred. When you look at Peter, he had to be broken of his pride. And as he broke them of those things, they became servants, poured out. I want to turn to uh, Luke, what he says in regard to uh, that same night. And it just says, and he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Do this. Now, there isn't a theologian in the world that would not agree that it's talking about that this is the the meal of communion. And we do this. We receive Jesus' body and blood for the forgiveness of our sins. And yes, we do it for the remembrance. But I read a couple of commentaries that also look at this, do this in a different way. How accurate it is, I don't know, but I really like the symbolism of it, and I want to share it with you. It's not only doing this, but it's do this, do the breaking and the pouring in your life. How? In remembrance. You see, he not only breaks and pours for us, but then he sends us to be broken and poured for others. That's what Paul was talking about when he said that we're to die to self daily. We're to be broken to those things that would get in the way of us serving God. And then we are to pour ourselves out. He said, I am being poured out like a drink offering. I love it in Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Romans 12, verse 1 is... Uh, is a powerful passage. It says, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual act of worship. Sacrifices, broken and poured out. When we have the courage to pray this prayer. We pray that, that God would break us of, of the pride, much like Peter. Break us of many of the disciples had a love for this world or for the temple or for what was going to happen on this earth. And he says, my kingdom's not of this world. To break us of our dependence 
on anything but God. If you remember, Peter was broken when he went out and wept after denying Jesus. And yet Jesus came to him, his child. He said, Peter, do you love me? Feed my sheep. Pour yourself out for them. Paul, 2 Corinthians chapter 12. I'm going to end with this today, and then we're going to go into a time of praying, a prayer of confession of sins, that God would break us so that he can use us. Paul says in uh, chapter 12 of 2 Corinthians, um, actually this is him saying that uh, he has a lot to brag about, but he's not going to. Listen to this. He says, I know a man, that's himself, in Christ, who 14 years ago was caught up into the third heaven, whether in the body or out of the body, I don't know. Only God knows. And I know this man was caught up into paradise, whether in the body or out of the body, I don't know. God does. And he heard things that cannot be told, which man may not utter. On behalf of this man himself, I will boast, but on my own behalf, I will not boast except in my weaknesses. Though if I should wish to boast, I would not be a fool, for I would be speaking the truth, but I refrain from it so that no one may think more of me than he sees in me or hears from me. So to keep me from becoming conceited because of the surpassing greatness of the revelations, a thorn in the flesh has been given to me. A messenger of Satan to harass me, to keep me from becoming conceited. Do you hear the breaking, the pruning, the discipline? Let us confess as we pray today. Gracious God, we ask you to to break us of anything that is getting in the way of, of us as your children serving you. Lord, break us of, of pride, of those times we think better of ourselves than of others. Lord, break us of greed, wanting more and more when, and not being satisfied with all the blessings you have given to us. Lord, break us of putting anything uh, ahead of you. Break us of, of our love for this world and what this world has to offer and, and thinking light of what you have given us in Christ for an eternity. Lord, break us of wanting what our neighbor has rather than helping them keep it and and to prosper. Break us of those times that we've talked about others and and torn down instead of building up and, and making others stronger with our service. Lord, in all the ways that we have not practiced the law of love, we lay before you, before your feet, just as Peter humbly bowed before you, Paul, all of your servants who were broken, we ask that you would lift us up in the same way. Broken and ready to be poured out in service to others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.